the one thing that's remained absolutely consistent with the gameplay in the Super Mario Bros. franchise is the platforming. Whether that be in the 2D or 3D realms, always leading to an incredible experience that's now gone on for almost 45 years. These exact moments are what led me to want to create today's video, specifically looking at the toughest platforming sections within each and every entry, going through exactly what makes them so hard, and in what level they appear. Oh yeah, and before we get started here, my name is Copycat, and if you haven't yet, then please subscribe to my channel, hitting that bell to stay notified when I upload new videos. The very first in the series, Super Mario Bros., came out for the NES in 1985, having two particular levels that have platforming moments that will give you trouble, starting with World 8-2. Here you're going to find swarms of Koopa paratroopas, with turtle cannons firing bullet bills into the mix as well, needing to be very skillful to dodge them, especially in some of the tighter sections. This stage also has a part where you need to jump across an enormous gap with only a very small area to do so, really needing to gather as much momentum as possible, so rushing isn't really an option. The other I want to look at is a few sections from the next level, World 8-3, especially the parts with the hammer bows that can be an absolute pain to get around, especially if you're not powered up. On top of that, the end staircase heading towards the flagpole is by far the most difficult to platform on in the entire game, as here it just consists of five solid blocks that are spread out enough so that you have to make some really risky jumps. This is just the icing on the cake for what's probably the game's hardest level. And just as a note, for all the ones we go through, let me know if I missed something in each one in the comments below. The second of the original trilogy that was released in Western markets is Super Mario Bros. 2, which has a handful of tricky platforming sections I want to look at, starting here with having to do some pinpoint accurate jumps in World 7-1. First off, when you start the sky-based stage, it looks like you're supposed to head right, but you quickly realize that that's just a dead end, where you're actually supposed to ride one of the bob bomb carrying albatrosses to the left to progress upwards. As a kid, I remember being extremely confused by this, as it's not really that straightforward at all. Something that is a common theme in World 7 that we'll see more of in just a bit. Once in that stage's next area, you'll come across by far its hardest part, needing to make almost perfect jumps between clouds while avoiding the Tweeters, Ninji, Shy Guys, and Sniffets. All while ensuring you don't panic and overjump, as you are able to pass right through the clouds, so one wrong move can set you back. The last part of the level is not easier by any means, as you have to navigate through tons of spark enemies while using mushroom blocks to get higher. Something that is hard as these balls of electricity move quite quickly, and getting hit by them is way easier than you think. Another thing I feel like I should mention before we move on, are two levels that are somewhat similar that can be found in World 5-1 and 6-2, both involving you needing to use enemies to cross some extreme voids. In 5-1, you have to use the jumping trouters, timing your movements perfectly so they can use their heads to make it to the other side. In 6-2, you need to use the flying albatross birds, riding on their backs while platforming around or on anything else in its flight path. Although, once you figure out the pattern, it becomes slightly easier. The final of the original NES trilogy is Super Mario Bros. 3. They came up for the system in 1990, where I think most players would agree that the toughest platforming part from it is the entirety of the World 8 airship. This auto-scrolling stage has you jumping between suspended ships that are occupied by the projectile-throwing rocky wrenches, which at times feels nearly impossible if you aren't powered up with a super leaf. Even though the tank and ship level are also difficult, I never died as many times as I did on the airship one, as one wrong move or a missed jump will send you plummeting to your death. Two other levels that have some stressful platforming moments are World 6-2 and 6-7 both being auto-scrolling airbase stages where dying can be very, very easy. In the former, you need to use the moving cloud lifts to progress forward, something that's super risky as it gives you no room for error and being patient isn't really an option. In the latter, you have to deal with donut blocks and icy platforms, with the annoying flame chomp enemies patrolling certain sections, making things pretty hard as you have to deal with all these different factors, meaning that you're bound to fall into the void at least a few times. One fortress level I need to mention that's essentially tough throughout its entirety is the second of World 6, as every single platform and floor surface within it is icy, meaning you need to deal with the slip and sliding while making it to the boom boom boss. What really makes me talk about this one are the thwomps. 
that try to squish you at any opportunity they get. Where obviously the surfaces also make it way more difficult, and dying to this foe is definitely inevitable. The final level I need to look at that I always had trouble platforming through is World 8 1, with there being a couple of instances where you need to use enemies to progress upwards or across. Really though, it is the enemies like the Bullet Bills or Piranha Plants which makes this one such a slog, as they're always placed in spots where they're almost unavoidable and you need patience on top of skill to succeed. Next up I want to look at the true Japanese sequel to the original, that was only released in North America years later under the title of The Lost Levels, having one of the toughest 2D platforming stages in Mario's history in World C3. Here you need to use the spring objects to launch yourself upwards, while also having to deal with a strong gust of winds which really moves your character in some wacky ways. There are also enemies like the Lakitus and Piranha Plants that definitely add to its trickiness, being put in specific spots where you're most definitely going to have to land or platform to. Meaning, if you aren't powered up, you are definitely going to take damage. The only other course I feel like is worth showcasing is World 8 3, which is a cloud-based stage that once again relies on you using a spring, as well as needing to make pinpoint jumps. One of these involves needing to cross a gap using two paratroopers, which is not a lot of fun, as in this game it's sort of finicky, making this already unforgiving game even tougher. The first handheld game featuring a mustachioed hero is Super Mario Land for the Game Boy, having a bunch of levels that have very tough platforming sections, starting with World 2-2. This one takes place on several platforms above a large body of water, where there's many parts where you need to dodge the jumping Urara and Boos, while traversing on the moving lifts to cross certain gaps. I think it's the game's rudimentary controls that also makes this one so arduous, needing to be very deliberate with your inputs to avoid death. Another level that has an exhausting combination of obstacles and enemies is World 3 2, needing to traverse tight gaps with overhanging spikes while also dealing with Akumu and Sue spider foes. These arachnids move very unpredictably, so it's important to clear them off the stage before you carefully move forward. Although, like in most situations, this is easier said than done, especially again, if you're not powered up. The next game in the series to be released is Super Mario World for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, having three levels with troubling platforming sections I want to look at, starting with the Special World Outrageous stage. This is all within a Force of Illusion type setting, where there's tons of enemies like Wigglers, Bullet Bills, Fiery Piranha Plants, Fire Snakes, and Amazing Flying Hammer Bros to worry about, all put within hard to navigate through spots with gaps and also large pipes. On top of that, there are trees in the foreground that obstruct your view, obscuring certain enemies from time to time, just adding to the overall confusion. Next, I want to look at levels like the Way Cool Special Stage and the Cheese Bridge area, as both require you to ride on or hold on to some sort of object attached to a wire, at times needing to activate switches to change your path to ensure you don't plummet into a void. It's the chainsaw hazards and fuzzy enemies, which really makes these ones a rage-induced mess, where I can't even tell you how many times I died on them during my playthroughs, even with a cape power-up. Finally, I think I should mention the Valley of Bowser 3, which features the count lifts that all have a timer on them that activates when you step on them. When the timer eventually gets to zero, then lifts will fall and you'll either have to jump to another one or lose a life. On top of this, a lot of them have a counter that only starts at 1, so you'll have to be very quick, but also precise as you move between them. Of course if you have a cape this isn't that hard, but power-ups are a crutch, and I'd rather judge these levels assuming you don't have them. I think it's safe to say that the hardest level from Super Mario Land 2 for the Game Boy is the final of the game, Wario's Castle, which really is a culmination of every world seen before it in this title. Here you'll come across areas that have gigantic spike balls and giant fire-breathing piranha plant statues, moving platforms and skull platforms that you need to traverse across the lakes of lava and avoid falling into the spikes above on, the Wario Fist and Karamembo, which both want to crush you from above, and finally, the odd floating Wario faces that you either need to defeat or avoid to move on to the big boss. The only other place in the game that has noteworthy sections that are quite tough are in the third level of the Mario Zone, where there's tons of spiky areas where you can take damage, especially if you don't have a super carrot. 
In some parts, you need to ride balls that are attached to chains to make your way over the spikes to progress. And in another, you need to take a conveyor belt and duck at times to avoid the spikes above you. Either way, one wrong move and you will get hurt. Next to be released is the very different Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island entry, having two levels with some tricky platforming in them. Where the first I want to look at is World 3's extra stage, More Monkey Madness. Here you need to cross large gaps using the rotating paddle platforms. Doing all this while avoiding the barrage of watermelon seeds spit from the mouths of the pesky monkeys, which can be very annoying as they're constantly moving up and down on vines. Also, the enemy placements of the Shy Guys and hopping tap taps don't help things at all. So losing Mario and things descending into chaos can happen very quickly. The other level I want to mention due to how insane it actually is, is World 6-5, titled The Very Long Cave, which is an auto-scroller that has tons of hazards that you need to steer clear of. On top of that, just like its name suggests, this course is extremely long, having parts where you need to avoid falling spikes, jump over and around pools of lava, and at its end, hop across gaps as the scroll begins to move faster. In total, completing this level will take around 6 minutes, so you need to be on your toes to get to the end safely. The first game in this series based within the 3D realm is Super Mario 64 for the N64, having a couple sections within levels that always gave me trouble for a myriad of reasons, starting with the daunting TikTok Clock Course. Now, what's interesting about this one is that based on when the player jumps into the clock face, the internal speeds of the objects within it will change. Where entering when the minute hand is near the 12 makes everything stop. Where entering when it's near the 3 will make everything move relatively normal. Where entering when it's near the 6 will result in random changes of speed. And where entering when it's near the 9 will cause everything to speed up. That means to even collect some of the stars, you need to enter when it's moving normally or stationary as otherwise you don't even have a chance to platform in this really harsh environment. Even though it is difficult, this one is fun. Something that can't be said about the next level we're going to look at. That one in particular I'm talking about is Rainbow Ride, which has you riding on a magic carpet through the majority of it, where you need to evade some really dangerous hazards. What's worse is that you also have to deal with the game's camera, which at times is frustratingly uncooperative so it can be hard to see even where you're going. I guess also everything being set over a void is another reason it appears in this video. Becoming player's most hated level, and also one of the hardest of the game. When looking at the toughest platforming section from Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube, almost everyone's going to admit that collecting the 8 red coins within the giant pachinko machine gave them the most trouble. This all has to do with how odd it feels to try and use the flood in this environment, especially when you're launched through the machine, where for some reason your momentum gets really really wacky. Even to this day, I have trouble gaining the shine sprite due to these unusual game physics, and it may be one of the only times in the Mario series I'm actually tempted to smash my controller. Some of the secret levels can also be a bother, as they remove the flood from your back and make you use Mario without it. Something that sort of goes against the whole point of the game, but whatever. The levels and features within them that have you do this include The Hillside Cave Secret that has a bunch of rotating and moving blocks and platforms The Secret of the Dirty Lake that has flipping platforms The Secret of Rico Tower that has long rotating pathways that definitely can trip you up due to their angle The Dune Bud Sandcastle Secret that has sand blocks that disappear once you walk over them the Beach Cannon Secret, that has disappearing slash reappearing platforms. The Yoshi Go Round Secret, that has many moving Yoshi blocks and crazy gaps between them. The Hotel Lobby Secret, that has a bunch of different types of blocks. The Secret of Casino Delfino, that has huge cubes that you need to ride through the stage on. The Shell Secret, that has many moments where you need to wall jump off certain objects. And finally, the Secret of the Village Underside where you need to be chucked by the piantas to the next platform, or fall into the void to your death. Nintendo would eventually return the series to its 2D roots, with the release of new Super Mario Bros. for the dual screen system, where in my opinion one of the hardest platforming moments from it are the snake blocks of the second tower of World 8. Here you have to ride this type of platform throughout this pretty intense vertical section of the stage, passing through many fire bars, falling spike balls, 
and rows upon rows of spikes you can damage yourself on, really needing to be patient and not get caught out in the wrong position. This might actually be the level where I died the most in this particular entry, and in this case that doesn't mean this level's bad, it actually is one of my favorites as it's so tough. The only other level that's worth mentioning is World 8-7, that has all different types of foes laid out in hard to traverse areas, where it's almost impossible not to take damage, even when being powered up as that won't exactly help you. It's really the axe throwing sledge bros, the boomerang throwing boomerang bros, and the fire throwing fire bros that makes this one so deadly, here actually being one of my least favorite of this entire entry. I think without a doubt, the hardest level of Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii is Luigi's Purple Coin Challenge of the Toy Time Galaxy, which is an insanely hard platforming based stage where you need to collect 100 coins before the time runs out. The catch is that you're only given 3 minutes, and you have to navigate your way through this Luigi looking planet by passing through disappearing and rotating platforms, which is not easy as there's also dark matter that can kill you instantly if you touch it. Using your spin move is very advantageous for you as it allows you to stay in the air for just a bit longer, which is the best when combined with a long jump that lets you get pretty far to other platforms. One level that's very tough due to the insane parameters it takes to complete it is the Lava Spire Daredevil Run, needing to complete this with only one point of health to spare. This is almost a nightmare as it's the one full of lava based obstacles and hazards where one wrong move can mean your demise, needing to almost pre-plan your route so you take the safest, most direct path to the finish line. To be honest, this level is difficult enough on its own regularly, so this added factor really doesn't help, and I think I die the most on the pole star parts, as I would always panic and get hit by a fireball. The second installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came up for the Wii in 2009, where my pick for the toughest platforming from it would have to go to World 9-7. This is all due to you traversing on ice blocks that have munchers within them, all while having to deal with the flame spinning piranha plants that can melt those blocks and the munchers inside can damage you. There are also the pesky prickly goombas that can protect themselves with a spiky shell, meaning you can't even bonk off them like normal, adding just another thing you have to worry about. One level that I need to show off due to its many punishing parts is World 9-4 which is an auto-scroller that involves many bob bombs that can easily explode in your face. I'd really say though the worst part about it is the fire piranha plants that always fire in spots that you need to be, where in some cases you can't even kill them so you just have to avoid them. Finally I think I should mention the castle of world 5, which has a series of grabbable fences that you need to jump between, while the entire time Iggy is firing green fireballs at you from off screen. Really, any time there's lava, the stakes automatically raise, as it's an instant death in most 2D entries, where here without a propeller shroom, you are bound to die. The sequel to the Space Base Wii entry also came out for the system, but this time in 2010, where surely the levels with the hardest platforming elements within it is the Grandmaster Galaxy's perfect run. Now not only do you have to beat the game's most difficult moments combined into one, but you also only have one hit point to do so the entire time. A challenge that's really fitting, as it's the final thing you can unlock in this title after you've collected every single power star. Sections you have to complete here include, using Yoshi's tongue to propel from flower to flower while dodging mines, paragoombas, and bullet bills, triggering a series of flip switch panels while avoiding the sentry beam's attacks, using the cloud shroom to navigate through an electric fence maze where you can easily get blown off course, moving across a bunch of flip and disappearing panels while a bunch of foes try to damage you, using pole stars to get through mines and electric rails, and finally needing to pass through a horde of hammer bros where in one instance you also have to jump on a few flomps to get your way to the star. Oddly this game has an even harder version of Luigi's purple coin challenge, here found in the Mario Squared Galaxy now only having 2 minutes to do this on this 8-bit version of Luigi. The one major difference is that you're now being chased by many cosmic clones that mimic your every move, meaning you need to be careful backtracking as you will surely collide with them at some point. Again, using your spin ability is really key in completing this one, but the dark matter areas here do seem to be much larger, so be careful. Nintendo would blend aspects of the 2D and 3D realms with the creation of Super Mario 3D Land for the 3DS, 
which also has a special final level that's by far its hardest, called Special 8 Crown. Again, this is the culmination of all the hard elements of every world in the game. Where I had the most trouble with the lift fuzzy part, as well as the big cosmic clone burner section, as both require you to jump a lot and avoid many things. This is not as hard as the perfect run, but it is still hard within this otherwise simple game. The one main complaint I have about it, even though I do still like it. Other than that, I'd have to say that the spitting platform part of Special 8-5 gave me loads of issues, as not only are some of these going really fast, causing you to lose your balance, but you're also here being chased by a large cosmic clone. This literally is almost impossible to complete without a Super Leaf power-up, as it just feels awkward due to the different speeds and shapes of these platforms. And of course, if you fall, it's into a void, so it's an easy life lost. The third installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries, oddly given the title of being the second, was released for the 3DS in 2012, having one group of courses that contained the hardest parts of it in it, in the Impossible Pack, that wasn't in the base game, only available through DLC. In the first course, you start off by having to swim through some very annoying Cheap Chomps, Porky Puffers, and Spiny Cheap Cheeps, all of which are moving insanely erratically, where not taking any damage takes way more skill than you think. Next you transition to a sky themed area, needing to traverse on a paddle wheel while a flock of crowbars attempt to swoop in and attack you. Bob Bums also drop out of the pipes trying to blow you up, and Lakitu's try to drop spinies on your head. Although it shouldn't be too hard as long as you keep moving, and stay ahead of everything, and also maybe use Lakitu's cloud to get to the pipe. Lastly, you get to a ground section where you need to get around a few chain chomps and hammer bros on your way to the flag. Obviously put in places where they're hard to avoid. The second course starts off with you needing to dodge very deadly fire bars, sometimes set within rotating block platforms, where you really do need to take your time, even though you don't have that much of it. At one point you have to wall jump with a relatively small gap, while having to worry also about fire bars and flame chomps. Something that is not easy at all, and without some luck, you will die. This then leads to a similar area, but with much larger rotating blocks that you need to get on top of to get to the flagpole area. Something that can give you some trouble, again due to the flame chomps trying to hurt you. The third and final course takes place in the dungeon with raising and lowering waves of poison needing to navigate across gaps before you're engulfed by the hazard. Most of these involve you having to bounce off different music note blocks, while avoiding different saws placed in very tough spots. And in the last section, you need to run across a conveyor belt, doing whatever you can to stay alive. I am glad that Nintendo made these courses, as the base game is so unbelievably easy that it's almost embarrassing, turning out, in my opinion, to be the worst entry in the franchise. The final installment of the new Super Mario Bros. subseries came up for the Wii U in 2012, where a lot of people online say that the Superstar Road's Pendulum Castle has the hardest platforming moments of the title. Here you have to worry about the large spinner hazards, which is a swinging ball on a chain that you obviously need to avoid while progressing through the stage. Most of the platforms you have to jump on are made of donut blocks, which get thinner and thinner the longer you progress meaning you can't really take your time, so you better be powered up as you will take damage in some way, shape, or form. The other level that has some very rough platforming is Firebar Cliffs, also found in Superstar Road, containing gigantic versions of the hazard that are really not easy to evade. There are a few parts here where you need to pull off some very pinpoint accurate jumps across gaps while avoiding the flames really needing to use your spin so that you can stay in midair for a bit longer and dodge taking any damage if you need to. There's a similar, even harder level in the new Super Luigi U DLC, which is actually an insane experience that's only for the most hardened platformers. So if you're up for the challenge, I suggest you check out that game mode. Next to come out is the spiritual successor to Super Mario 3D Land and Super Mario 3D World for the Wii U which has a super difficult level that only unlocks once you collect everything in the game in World Crown Crown's Champion Road. Like most final stages, this one again is a culmination of every demanding platforming element the game has to offer, having to get through sections that include moving blocks with Octagoombas that try and shoot projectiles at you, a part with a lot of gaps and charging chucks that try to body slam you, a blinking block part, where the intervals it changes in come up incredibly fast, a part where you need to defeat Kamix and dodge fire bars, while also needing to worry about the blocks falling out from underneath you, 
a part where you have to swim in a moving waterfall, where there's a lot of spikes you have to get around, and finally, a dash panel part where you go incredibly fast and have to dodge the shockwaves from the ring burners, which can be a very intense experience. The only other level I feel like I should mention is World Star 2, aka Super Galaxy, that's full of flipping types of platforms that you need to run across to progress forward. If you want to collect everything, then you need to be very careful, as there are parts where it's extremely easy to die, and that's even with a power-up. So you better be prepared to try over and over again, as it definitely will happen. I definitely feel like I must have missed parts of some other levels, so if you think I did, then please let me know in the comments below. In the absolutely massive Super Mario Odyssey Switch entry, definitely the toughest platforming in it takes place on the darker side of the moon, during the long journey's end. I'm not really sure where to start with this one, whether it be platforming over the lava using poles that from time to time disappear, the really tricky lava bubble part where you need to jump between lava pools while avoiding the moon snakes, the uproot section where you need to avoid the mini burbos that spawn at your feet, the traversing through frozen water while avoiding the fuzzies, the flower path section where you need to jump over some pretty tall obstacles, the appearing platform section where I probably lost the most lives during my playthroughs, or the fight against the Donkey Kong boss at the end. Everything is hard here, just take your pick and hope that you survive because there's no checkpoint. Next up is the Bowser's Fury game mode that was bundled alongside the re-release of Super Mario 3D World for the Nintendo Switch, which isn't that tough overall when it comes to platforming, but I at least did have some trouble with Mount Miagmao. Most of this area involves switchboards, needing to use them to ride your way up the mountain while collecting cat shards or other goodies along the way. Of course also needing to stay out of the way of the fire bar hazards and enemies. It's really the fact that you're suspended in mid-air, usually over lava which makes this one so risky, where if you fall off you might lose a life and have to start all the way at the bottom again. The only other area I can say gave me some sort of trouble is the rolling roller aisle, where basically every single platform you step foot on is rotating in some way. That means you really have to be careful and keep Mario balanced, especially as there's also lava hazards incorporated within, and enemies like Kamek and the Piranha Plants that try and stop you. I'll actually say that not using a Super Leaf power-up on this one will make it way harder, but this game mode basically hands them to you like candy, so you can't really help but take advantage of that. The latest of the franchise to be released is Super Mario Bros. Wonder for the Switch which actually has a few levels I want to look at, starting with what might be the hardest 2D challenge ever made by Nintendo, titled the Final Final Test Badge Marathon. Here you go through different rooms that all require you to use a specific badge within them, with some of the most grueling platforming you've ever seen mixed in, where if you fail, you have to go back to the last checkpoint, which are few and far between. The situations you encounter in this one includes, using the parachute badge to float downwards while dodging sugar stars and activating wow buds to lower the lava so that you don't die, using the floating high jump badge to jump and ground pound on accordion-like lifts to propel them forward while also avoiding the poison geysers, using the dolphin kick badge to swim quickly underwater and dash away from the bolts of electricity, using the crouching high jump badge to do just that along different zip tracks with dangerous obstacles, using the wall climb badge to scale upwards in a room where poison is quickly rising and there are little sparks and hot heads everywhere, using the spring feet badge to navigate super small platforms and jump over fire bars, which is where I died the most, using the jet run badge to run off missile mags and other platforms to progress upwards, using the boosting spin jump badge to save yourself from falling into the void or avoid several different types of spikes, using the grappling vine badge to latch onto different walls, but timing it right so that the hot hot rocks don't burn you, and finally using the invisibility badge, needing to jump between large bumpers and blooms, with only a few things to indicate where Mario is on screen. Honestly, I'm surprised to have this much trouble in a Mario game, and even still, I don't think I've beat this one without losing a life. Another that gave me trouble is the Petal Isle special Way of the Goomba stage, where you actually become this diminutive Mario foe and have to platform through several crazy hazards. However, the part I had the most pain with is when you have to use the Bluebird's bubbles as your way to cross gaps, something that isn't that intuitive and usually just led to me losing a life. The last from this game I have to look at is another special world level in Pipe Rock Plateau's Bounce Bounce Bounce, 
where you have to bounce on the back of a hoppo towards the wonder flower. This is over many spikes that act as the hoppo's platforms, and they themselves move incredibly fast. So falling off them is easy, and with nowhere to land, you're doomed to die. Now, I get that there's so many other levels in this game that I could have included instead, so I'd love to know what you found difficult in the comments below. Alright, that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you did enjoy this one. If you did, please leave a like, comment below what you thought about it, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Also, please go follow my Instagram at CopycatGamer. There I'll put some cool clips and items from my collection that you won't see anywhere else. Hope you guys all have a good day, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!